The size of a fireplace log, this nuclear fuel bundle generates a lot more heat. It's packed with enough uranium to power 100 homes for a year. To obtain the uranium, they tunnel 500 meters underground at this site in northern Saskatchewan. This mine is the largest source of high-grade uranium in the world. The uranium ore lies beneath a bed of water-saturated sandstone. To reach it, they use drill bits studded with tungsten carbide buttons. Like knuckles on a fist, the button bits punch into the rock face. These first holes are for pipes that will pull heat out of the ground and freeze it around the ore. The miner operates the equipment by remote control. It transfers a new piece of pipe to the end of the drill every meter and a half to penetrate 130 meters into the sandstone bed. It takes up to eight days to install just one length of pipe, and there are 200 of them. They configure the pipes so they surround the ore deposit. These freeze pipes will stabilize the ground and they'll also turn high-pressure groundwater to ice so it won't interfere with the actual mining. A freeze plant above ground chills calcium chloride brine to minus 30 degrees Celsius and sends it through the freeze pipes. The brine absorbs heat as it freezes the ground and loops back to be chilled again. Above the uranium deposits, they now gear up to mine the ore. They'll use this bit to chew into the ore body in order to make an initial small diameter hole, known as a pilot hole. The pilot hole maps out the drill route to ore and it creates an entry point for larger mining equipment. From a raised position, the bit bores vertically into the rock to drill the pilot hole and reach a specific level below the ore body. They're now ready for the reamer bit. The reamer has numerous button-encrusted wheeled tentacles. As this animation shows, the drill pulls the reamer up the pilot hole, widening it, and the broken ore falls into what's known as an extraction chamber. Here, a tram, operated by remote control, scoops up the rock. This remote control system keeps miners a safe distance away from falling rock hazards. It also minimizes their exposure to the radioactive uranium in the ore. As another precaution, they continuously ventilate the mine, introducing fresh air every 20 minutes. Steered by the operator's joystick, the tram delivers the ore to a scanner. By measuring the amount of radioactivity in the ore, the scanner determines the uranium content is about 15%. In much of the ore, the uranium content is even greater, on average around 18%, and that's considered to be very high grade. The tram now empties the ore into a chute. Cameras follow the rock's journey to the next station. Then, from a control room, an operator manipulates a hydraulic hammer to smash the ore to bits. The broken ore then migrates to a mill that grinds it into a fine sand. They add water and it becomes slurry, which they then pump to the surface. Trucks transport the uranium ore slurry to a mill 80 kilometers away. They pull into a special offloading facility. The support for a vacuum system aligns with the tote that encases the slurry tank. Once in position, a vacuum pipe drops into the tank and suctions up the slurry. Cameras provide a live feed of the unloading progress to a control room seven meters away. A technician observes everything from here. After a wash and a radiation check, the truck leaves. Stay tuned for the transformation of uranium into nuclear fuel.